I'm Dave, the Filed Up Water Filer, and let me thank you for coming onto our website and looking around. I hope these tips are something that you can uh, find some value in and that might help you. Now let me tell you, I'm no expert, never going to claim that I'm the best at anything. In fact, I frequently say, I don't know anything about anything, but let me tell you why I think. Well, today I'm going to tell you why I think about flocking decoys. decoys. You know, you get out on the web and look at some other uh, tips, and sometimes they come off of being very complex and pretty labor intensive. Well, mine isn't. Um, this is something I do to all my decoys in the off season. And then uh, during the season, I'll do, do some select decoys as they start to look wear. And, and actually, it's the flocking didn't always get worn, or I don't see a lot of flocking um, getting worn, maybe sometimes on the uh, tails. But what I do see is they get dirty, and sometimes just reflocking them is a way to freshen them up and make them uh, pop and look alive. And as long as we're talking about that, I guess I'd share that, you know, I, I get on these chat boards and the forums sometimes, I'm sure you have too, where you see people talking about um, you have to have the absolute best decoys to get the birds to land. And the, the arguments about, you know, some guy saying that he needs those $100 piece decoys and how well they work for him. And somebody else saying, well, I use tires and I've landed geese uh, that way. My theory is pretty easy on this. It's that the better your decoys look, the higher percentage of the geese are going to come in and land in your decoys. Just means per exposure, the birds to your decoys, which percentage of them will come in and land? That's my theory. So I like using uh, nice decoys. I like to keep them uh, clean as I can. I like to keep them looking pretty pristine out there, out there. So let me show you what I do. Pretty simple, not labor intensive. I'm sure I'll get some feedback that this isn't the best way to do it. But again, it's the thing I do that works for me. So hang in there and... Uh, See if this doesn't help you. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. The decoy I'm going to use is this Bigfoot floater. And I've already, this is going to be a redone because I, uh, a couple years ago, flocked this tail and uh, I probably touched up this head a few times. But what I do is I just quickly try to uh, take a cloth, and make sure I get the dirt off. Now, I will use a wet cloth if I need to, although I try not to because then you just have to wait for the decoy to dry and I'm frequently doing uh, you know 30 or 40 of these in a day so I try to get them uh, try to speed them up a little bit uh, always have a good brush and uh, brush them up a little bit I do not worry about getting every piece of dirt off of this um, I know I listen I know people say well it won't stick da 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 I get that. I try to do these, uh, like I said, I do a lot of them. I want them to look good, but I'm not going to use each one as an art project. So, anyway, I'll brush them off. You can't see any dirt on them. Get the head same. And then that one is about ready to paint. All right, well, first thing I want to share with you is that I use uh, Rust-Oleum, uh, flat, black, oil-based paint. I take the lid off and let it uh, air for a little while and thicken up just a bit. It tends to stick to the decoy and hold the flocking a little bit better. Um, otherwise, I just take it. I usually start with the tails. And this tail's been flocked before, but I just go ahead and paint right over the top of it. I try to keep... Uh, straight lines on here as much as possible um, and that's just so that you get a little bit more definition and it tends to make the decoy look a little bit uh, sharper out in the field or out on the water in this case so um, but you don't have to worry about that I think that's probably has to do more with what I think looks good than maybe um, the birds I don't know I do go all the way up under here again because I'm looking for the contrast. I want the I want the decoy to uh, show the you know, vividly the difference between the white and the black. You know, and I know they sell white flocking, and uh, some people uh, do that too. I don't, and the reason for that is is because that white flocking gets dirty fast. 
And when it's dirty, it doesn't look good. It doesn't help those decoys stand out. It doesn't help the differences in the textures stand out. Um, and I think it hurts. So I don't use it. I use just flat white uh, Rust-Oleum paint. And again, what I pay attention to is trying to get the colors to, to pop, to contrast, to stand out, um, for them to look bright. My Canadian geese, the only thing I put on them is black flocking. Um, I will touch them up with white flat paint, um, but not any other colors of flocky. Uh, So I got the tail done, painted, painted, and I go ahead and flock it first, and then I'll go back and do the head. Now, again, they sell different types of uh, tools to help you apply the flocking. I don't use any of that. What I do is I take my hand, and I try to spread it all over the painted areas. So I keep the decoy over the bucket so I don't lose so much. The one thing you have to be very careful with the uh, flocking over and over is that I don't get the flocking material dirty. I always try to get the ends of these decoys. give it a visual to make sure I got underneath where I like to do. You can see it right there. Come back and do the head. One thing to be careful with is you don't want to get it in the eyes. I like to have those eyes shine. So I try to keep it, uh, no new paint on them. Touch them up with a, actually with a uh, Rainex cloth and just rub those uh, patches there. One thing to remember is you want to get this paint on there pretty thick, as thick as you can, especially if you're going over uh, something that's already been flocked um, because that tends to soak up a bunch of this paint. So I put it on as thick as I can without it running down onto the decoy. I try to keep the lines very uh, crisp along the cheek patches. Sometimes I do a better job than others. Got the head all painted up. Not too many drips. I'll do another little uh, uh, tip here is try to keep your hands from getting paint on them. If they do, you got to dry them off a little bit or the bottom will stick to your hands. It's a little bit easier to keep the, the flocking bucket on the floor, but to try to help you guys all see what I'm doing, I got it up here on the table, so it's a little bit harder. Patting it down, get the loose flocking to drop back into the bucket. I will tell you this, if you want to start a fight with your wife, do this stuff in the kitchen. It's kind of messy. At the end of the day, you'll have to sweep this up. And that's why I keep it in the bucket, because I try to keep reusing it as I, as I can. on thick, I tap it, it settles, holds well, uh, better than maybe you think it would. Anyway, that's what that decoy is looking at like now. And I don't know how well it's coming up on the video, but it really does shine a lot better. I think if you look at them, you can see that the, the uh, clean them up and uh, putting some new paint and flock on them really does make them stand out, and that's a fine looking decoy this fall. Well, thanks for watching today's video tip on flocking the Canadian geese, and I hope it's a tip that has some benefit to you and is worth the time you put into watching this. 
Maybe it'll help you uh, fix up some of your decoys or maybe just give you some confidence to uh, do something you wouldn't have done otherwise. It's not hard. It's not a big deal. It's not real expensive. And I do believe they make your decoys look a lot better. So from Dave from Filed Up Waterfowlers, here's hoping you're having a great day and a killer season this fall. Have fun, be safe, and uh, check back with us and let us know how you're doing. I love getting email from you, some pictures from you. We can post up and share uh, amongst other filed up waterfowlers. Have a great day.